He met the guy once, and so yeah. Hey, we're live. What's up, you oh, two? We're live. Okay. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to tell you, man. Uh, we just started. That's how rusty we no are. Hey, guys, down. welcome to Lord's hey. Walmart. Well, cover price, a top 10. Uh, I got uh, Miss Laura with me. I got Marty with me. I got a pretty interesting uh, uh, books this week, man. A little bit of something different, something old returning. Uh, but as always, while you guys are congregating, I need to hear you all say the word. What's up, you two nights? Welcome to Rose Long Box Longbox presents the cover race top 10 for the week ending March 15th or March 10th, March 14th. Happy tax day. I hope you guys finished filing. <laughs> uh, that was yesterday, actually. Uh, speaking of taxing, Marty, see what's good. Hey, greetings and salutations, Lady Laura. Welcome back. Great to have you back as always. Thank you for everybody out there joining us live or on the rewind. Uh, appreciate you joining as well. Hopefully uh, we have a great show for you guys, which, you know, of course, where I guarantee you will have a great show or your money back. Oh, that's no. right. Absolutely. We will refund <laughs> all your money. Laura, I get say it. it's good to people. Because we're free. Right, Marty? Yeah. Right, right. Exactly. Like, good. Good job, Laura. Oh, that's really good. I wasn't even thinking about it like uh, hi guys welcome in yeah i'm excited to be back it's been a little bit of a break for me from the show while i worked full time so yeah it's nice to be here and hang out and chill for a little bit yeah it's great to Did have i you say back. it's not april somebody says april 10 of april i said yeah. didn't i say april 14th 15th yeah i could have swore i did or maybe Marty, your shoulders look big you've been lifting they like cantaloupes yeah Arr. you're like you're big today me, little, me smash <laughs> Speaking of smashing, <laughs> this is brought to your friends over at coverprice.com. You price guys collect on trends. Head on over to coverprice.com. If you haven't checked, you got to check out the new format. It's got a bunch of cool stuff, not only this week's top 10, but also they show the runners up on their page. So it's, and it's a really cool list of runners up. So go right after the show, go around on over there and see uh, the runners up 11 through 20. Um, 
and you see some Dave Stevens goodness on there as well. Speaking of which, uh, you, uh, his uh, show is sponsored by the words of it. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's been so long. His show is sponsored by Bird City Comics. Use a discount code LOTLB to get 15% <laughs> off anything in the comics exclusive store. And we're giving away something today, huh? Uh, yeah. Are we? Yeah. Oh, yes, we are. You didn't even know. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> Issue number one, the Ken Lastly variant. Okay. And you got this one. Yeah. These so, officially uh, launch tomorrow. They're not out yeah. yet. They come out tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys are Doom fans, it had some killer ratios with it, too. Yeah. So you can tell this is the Virgin and this is the uh, a trade. The trade even looks dope because I like the way the word Doom is kind of crumbling. Yeah, that looks right. Bad. It's pretty cool. The whole thing just works. Yeah. So, you know, what we can do we're going to give away something in the live chat this time. But people for people on the rewind. Or people on a live chat don't want to win again, leave a comment after this video post to be in the group drawing for Thursday show for some even more of Miss Laura's book. She just doesn't know it yet. So you got to comment. Uh, you got to comment. Yeah, way ahead of you. I plan on giving away something pretty good on Thursday, too. So all right, nice. let's get right to it, boys and girls. Uh, what do we have for this week's runner up? All right, so kicking off the almost list, at number 11, we have Star Wars Thrawn Alliances number four. This is the EM Gist 1 in 25 from this year. This four-issue miniseries has been doing very well with major Thrawn fans. It's the comic adaptation of a novel by the same name, featuring a storyline focusing on the duality of Anakin and Vader and where Admiral Thrawn fits in. It's a world builder for Marvel, and fans have been enjoying it. This 1 in 25 variant nails the, that internal fight that Anakin and later Vader suffered. We tracked 13 copies sold at a seven-day trend of 46%, with a high sale of $88 for a near-mint raw copy and a current raw near-mint fair market value of $54. Uh, Star Wars uh, Thrawn Alliance is number four, the EM just one in 25 variant. Uh, it, it's been a minute since we had Star Wars stuff coming back on here, huh? I meant, uh, because yes, the, it, it I meant the Ahsoka series was so good the way it ended, you know, you know, what Thrawn. I need to, I'm gonna rewatch it again. Uh, because I, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, by the way, I have the, I've read the, uh, the actual novel. Thrawn did you? Alliance. Yeah, I did. And I, but I've never, I've never actually read the, comic adaptation to that so anthony did the nice. audio of the novel and it was so good really was, okay yeah. nice nice Have yeah check that out yeah so star wars thrawn alliance is number four em geist one in 25 Aaron. look at thrawn back on the list and look what else is back on the list yes number 10 brings you ultimate black panther number one this is the stefano caselli regular cover published by marvel in 2024 we had a very small break from the Ultimate Universe last week, but this book managed to stay on the top 10 list at number 9. This week, we see it drop down to 10, likely due to the Ultimate Spider-Man number 1's reappearance. Nevertheless, the Ultimate Universe's staying power is clear. Fans can't get enough. We tracked 25 copies sold at a 7-day trend of 5%, with a high sale of $105 for a CGC 9.8 copy and a current raw near mint fair market value of $38. That is wild that this is back on here, to be honest with you. Well, and it's still number 10. I thought it'd be off the list by now um, because, I, you know, this is a somewhat mutant dominated list, but uh, good to yeah. see, you know, just or good old organic comic, but I, why do I feel like we're just, you know, smoke this fire? We got the, something ultimate is coming down the way. I mean, I have a feeling something is going to be said during San Diego Comic-Con Hall H. Oh, interesting. Really interesting. interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of which, here's another one. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Number nine, Dazzler number one from 1981. The Taylor Swift Dazzler rumor has to be one of the most popular MCU rumors since three Spider-Men in No Way Home appeared. This past week didn't see any additional rumors for Swift. However, just this past Monday, director Sean Levy had an interview and was asked about Swift's appearance in the film. Of course, the answer was ambiguous. The director replied with, the proliferation of rumors about who and is and isn't in this movie is fabulous because no one will ever know the truth until July 26th. Take that as you will, but this vague reply will likely spark another fire under the rumor, sending this book soaring in popularity again. 
We tracked 32 copies sold at a seven-day trend of 5% with a highest sale of $28 for a near mint raw copy and a current raw near mint fair market value of 14 bucks. I have a stack of these. So it's like, bring it, bring on all the Yeah, numbers. bring it on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Laura, the, I think your mic is sounding like you're moving in and out. I don't know if you are. Or not. Yeah, maybe just come closer to the mic. Oh, okay. okay so I'm you gonna... heard that, too. I thought maybe it was. Uh, no, hello, let me mess with it while you guys do the next one. We'll it's see so mesmerizing. You can't, you know, can't, <laughs> can't keep your ears <laughs> off it. Number nine on the list is Dazzle number one. Top raw dog. Seven, only 28 bucks, man. But there's a bunch out there, like Laura yeah, said. Yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're here for number eight. Yep, number eight brings you, it's back, Ultimate Spider-Man number one. This is the Marco Cicchetto regular cover, published by Marvel in 2024. Last week, this book fell off the top ten list after being a long-reigning member of the Hot Sellers. This week, the book returns and overtakes Ultimate Black Panther number one. Spider-Man is Marvel's most popular hero, and it makes sense that his new Ultimate debut would hit high numbers consistently. We tracked 35 copies sold at a seven-day trend of 37%, with a high sale of $90 for a raw near-mint copy and a current raw near-mint fair market value of $79. You called it, Tivo. You called it. So on to the rumors about uh, Deadpool, Wolverine. I mean, uh, the latest one, I don't know if you read it, is Tony Stark will be back in some iteration. Uh, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that yeah. too. So I, why not? I mean, you know, I mean, they, they should probably lead with that. It probably get, I mean, it's probably going to do well blockbuster wise anyway, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty, pretty sure they should lead with that. But I mean, it's ultimate Spider-Man run. I'm telling you, just keep on buying them all the ultimate titles, man. Cause they're going to be new characters coming out left and right. And I think, I mean, it's only, I mean, Mary Marvel does an animated ultimate series or maybe part yeah. of the what if series. It's not yeah. anything. I mean, come on. If you think about Miles Morales came from the ultimate universe. So it's crazier right. things have been, you know, come to fruition. You know, they check the sales. They, they know what the put the posts on the readers, uh, whatever neck, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever posts on yeah. Their neck. The yeah. The posts on the, yeah. Post yeah. On whatever their, their orifice, they're <laughs> finding out whether their gut is cutting them. Uh, anyway, number eight on list, ultimate Spider-Man number one, Marco Chichet, a regular damn raw dog for $90. Damn. Oh, it's good to see this book on there. Well, hold on. Before I do this next one, um, how's my mic? Is that any better? Or am better, I still going yeah. in and out? Much better. No, you no, have no. To say the magic good. words first for us to. I'm yeah. like have my face in this mic, so hopefully you guys can hear me. You good. know what you have to say <laughs> for it to work. No, not doing it. Yeah, you do. Uh, it was invoked on the live chat. All right, all right, all right. Come to me. I've been waiting. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, Here, we go. Go. All right. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Number seven. Right. Hopefully, my mic's better. The Silver Surfer number one from 1968. The announcement of Silver Surfer's casting has cast a strong divide among the fandom. Marvel cast Julia Garner as Shalabal. Am I saying that right? And yeah. it was not the Silver Surfer that fans were expecting. Oh, man, I heard about this all over social media. Still, fans took to the aftermarket for Sil Silver Surfer comics, stocking up on Norrin Rad's key books. This details the origin of the Silver Surfer and is also one of the most iconic covers of the character. As fans wait for more news on the Fantastic Four movie, many are holding their breath, thinking that this will be used as a transition to Nora Red to the Nora Red storyline. We tracked 26 copies sold at a seven-day trend of 39%, with a high sale of $2,200 for a CGC 7.5, and a current raw near mint very good copy going for about 410 bucks. That's what mine is. I think mine is a. Some, I have yeah. issues one, two, three, and four all range from seven point oh to eight point oh, or excuse me, seven point oh. Yeah, to eight point oh. Those. What uh, did you think issues. of the news, Tivo? Did it make you all angry? I saw people. Just no, because I know it's not going to be. You're still going to get Norman Red Silver Surfer. If anything, that's that's actually very recognition that Norman Red is coming because the Shalabal is from the same universe as the Silver Surfer yeah. now. Whatever iteration that becomes, you know, is, is she an alternate version where she gave herself up and left Norman Rad behind, kind of like what he did in the regular 616? I can, you know, you know, so maybe Norman Rad, the real Norman Rad, will see her uh, down the road and be like, hey, love, love reunited and everybody's happy. And they're just super, super uber powerful now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, all right. Number seven on this server, server number one. And uh, let's get to it. This is your ex and part of the show. Nice. 
Number four brings you X-Men Annual number 14, published by Marvel in 1990. The name's Gambit. Remember it. How, how'd I do? Is that, 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 was that pretty good? That was not that a good terrible. Accident. No. Good, that's good. The name's Gambit. Just, Remember just, it. Just talk like the, the water boy, <laughs> and then you can do a Cajun accent. Okay. I can't do a Cajun <laughs> accent. Anyways, okay. the name's Gambit. Remember it. What a triumphant moment in animated storytelling. Animation has always been a form of storytelling that has frequently been directed at children. The popularity of an anime has reshaped the way we review animation. Wow, that's a tongue twister. The way we view animation. Nailed movies it. like, yeah, movies like, thank you, Lady Laura. Very nice. Yeah. Movies like Into the Spider Verse started showing the general public that animation can be used to tell deep and moving stories. X Men 97 follows suit and takes their audience on an emotional roller coaster, ending with a shocking moment involving everyone's favorite raging Cajun. Unsurprisingly, Three of his books made it to the top 10 list. We tracked 26 copies sold at a seven-day trend of 67%, with a high sale of $32 for a very fine raw copy and a current raw near-mint fair market value of $41 and a CGC 9.8 at $183. Yeah, X-Men Annual number 14. Arguably the first appearance of Gambit. I don't know. Yep. Many people will see this one or X Men. Uh, was it uh, two? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, but uh, I don't think he's gone. I think he's coming back, right? Because I think they already showed it. There was a mid season trailer for it, and and they showed yeah. it. So you know, um, but the rest of the X Men though, I don't know, man. It was powerful. That Sentinel is also from the comics, by the way. The Sentinel with the weird the crazy. Sentinels, yeah giant kai kaiju body uh that one's from the comics as well so i mean uh be on the lookout for that although you know um i mean it's a cool reference back to the comic book so x-men annual number 14 raw dog 32 bones on number six we'll be halfway there boys and girls as promised look at that more classic gambit oh it's so beautiful <laughs> i love this cover all right here we go next up at number five we have x-men volume one number 24 so while episode five was a phenomenal sequence, it focused on a particular set of characters. Throughout this season, we see the love triangle begin to form between Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit. This episode hit the pinnacle of the romance and was also what may be the end. We won't go into spoilers, but the showrunners tested Rogue and Gambit's relationship. In the end, he proved his love for her and this cover perfectly captures the love between these two characters. We tracked 41 copies sold at a seven-day trend of 68%, with a high sale of $26 for a very fine copy, and a current raw near-mint fair market value of $19, while a 9.8 went for about 217 Yeah, so uh, classic right. X-Men uh, cover, X-Men number 224. Lori's still kind of going in and out. Maybe uh, you want to log out and log back in. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. Sorry, guys. If I'm not back before the next one, just have... Marty, cover for me. I'll try. It. I got you. I got you. All right. Got you. X-Men number girl. five coming in. Uh, or X-Men number 24 coming in number five. What do we have for number four? four. Another yeah, I love this cover. Yeah, number four brings you Earth X volume one, number 12, published by Marvel in 2000. Shala Ball is the first MCU Silver Surfer, while the decision to select Shala Ball over Norrin Rad was controversial. This book is still taking off. It features her first cover appearance and a cameo appearance in the book. The book doesn't offer a high value entry point with most books being found in the $30 range. It is still too early to tell if Shala Ball will have staying power, but some fans are already banking on her MCU appearance. We tracked 53 copies sold at a seven day trend of 406% with a high sale of $80 for a near mint plus raw copy and a current raw near mint fair market value of $35. So are we, are we all saying this is the first appearance of Shala Ball as a uh, service or uh, Herald of Galactus? Is that what we're saying? Cause I mean, I don't think there's anything in continuity about that shows that um, I, I, I have. Yeah. I've never heard of that. No. 
yeah at all. but yeah i mean you know this was easily a dollar bin book probably of know, course for sure news drop yeah but, i mean a great know. cover you know good collectible cover i mean if you will but i mean it's a great read too alex ross can't go wrong man earth x oh you know, alex uh, ross yeah uh, I like uh, the the, uh, the follow up to this is actually really good, which is Universe X. Yeah, yeah, which is mind blowing. It's just like, pew, they just went like just went off the rails and just told this kind of all cosmic story where this is relatively Earthbound, you know, per se. Yeah. I mean, there is the yeah. Silver Surfer and everything, but the Universe X really expands on the on the uh, Marvel on um, the cosmic side of the MC. Of the really? MCU. So, yeah. how how much does it expand out? Uh, by a lot in. yeah 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 i mean it takes place in the future kind of just like this does earth x town you see an old uh captain america uh, yeah yeah you know, okay so and all these are really kind of down and depressing too <laughs> you know any alternate oh, wow. story is always kind of down and depressing but yeah you know, in a good way it's a good read man so all right marty miss laura's not back so it's all on okay. you i got it number three brings you x-men volume one number 266 published by Marvel in 1990. While this book is the second appearance of Gambit, it does feature a much more iconic cover. Fans of the X-Men 97 series have been scooping up all things Gambit. His popularity has exploded overnight. As we all wait in anticipation of the next episode, we're all trying to grab just a few more iconic books to remember good old Remy LeBeau. LeBeau. We tracked 46 <laughs> copies sold at a seven-day trend of 88% with a high sale of $750 for a CGC 9.8 in a current raw near-mint fair market value of $159. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, relatively inexpensive, right? I mean, 9.8 for $750? I, mean, yeah. I mean, I will say it was there was a large print run on these, you know, uh, but they're notorious. They're kind of hard to get in 9.8 because the covers are so thin. Uh, you Very see, thin, yeah. Just when you see your copy, just like open up the front, but you yeah. see how you know the covers were back then. They weren't all that uh, that good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Uh, Uncanny X Men number two six six coming in number three. I guess you're gonna have to do another all of them. Damn, she done abandoned us, man. She 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 done pop smoke, brother. No problem. All right. What do we have Bring number it on. two? Yes, number oh. two brings you, yeah, Transformer number one. This is the Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer regular cover published by Image in 2023. Transformers Rise of the Beasts was thought to be the big launch movie for the Hasbro cinematic universe. However, due to a disappointing box office returns, many fans thought the future plans for the universe were scrapped. Last week, at CinemaCon 2024, Paramount announced that they will move forward with the Transformer slash G.I. Joe crossover movie. This is a huge announcement after hitting radio silence for the past year and also brings newfound attention to the book that takes place in the shared universe known as Energon. We tried Energon. 17 Energon. Energon. I, Energon. Oh, I had to do it. Sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> we cracked 17 copies sold at uh, Laura, Laura's back. Okay. I'm back. Yeah, sorry. Just to bust your yeah, balls. I'm back. I know. We should have known because every time sold. he says it, he says it doesn't say it. I, I always I say it the saying. same way. Energon. 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 I if you watch the Transformers films or movies and cartoons, you know they say Energon. They just spell it wrong yeah, yeah, and yeah, mess you you're up. Right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I, I, I was wrong. You were right. Thank you, Lady Laura. No <laughs> problem. Enough, enough of this bingo thing luckery. <laughs> All right. We tracked 17 copies sold at a 7 8 trend of 25% with a high sale of $22 for a near mint raw copy and a current raw near mint fair market value of $16 and a CGC 9.8 fair market value of $72. Well done, Marty. And you covered well for me. So. Done. I, I did. Like, I did. People you like did. vicious in the live chat. They're like, pay the video. <laughs> No, man. Alert. I'm like, I, Dang, man, I think they'll the just be, you know, I think they'll just be happy if just be and then Marty is reading them all, so give him a break and stuff. So, oh, so Miss Laura, you can read the last one. How's that? Totally my well, do I sound any better though? Because I changed the settings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, so Transformers all right. number one. I mean, 
I don't know why the G.I. Joe versus Transformers book isn't isn't you know on this list. You know what I mean? Are, are, my, are people priced out or am I not paying attention? Because I got that book a long time ago when we spec in this show when our friend Mikey Sutton, rest in peace, that there was going to be a joined Hasbro universe with uh, Transformers, uh, G.I. Joe, all mm-hmm. this stuff. And we had to wait before they even dropped the news. So I was going to say that one, that uh, there's a G.I. Joe versus Transformers uh, miniseries that came out. That is the true first kind of meeting of them in Marvel's uh, world, of, you know, so. But, you know, you didn't get the new flavor of whatever. So I can feel you. So I would have for number one. Oh, and this back on here. Yeah, here we go again. Number one, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin, number one from IDW back in 2020. Paramount came in hot with announcing two huge movie properties at CinemaCon 2024. The first was Transformers G.I. Joe, which was already a surprise enough. The next announcement blew away the fandom, a live adaptation of The Last Ronin. Not only that, but the film will be rated R and will be reportedly very bloody. For those that don't know, The Last Ronin is a dark, dystopian future of the TMNT series, where only one of the turtles has survived. The book is tragic and full of wrath. The series ends on a hopeful note, but it is too early to tell whether the movie will end with the same cliffhanger. We tracked 47 copies sold at a seven-day trend of 59%, with a high sale of $158 for a near mint plus, with a current raw near mint going for about $124, and a CGC 9.8 going for 264. Yeah, I don't think this surprised anybody when this came out. I mean, people were buying it up because it was it was a new turtle. I mean, you hadn't seen a new turtle in decades, right? I mean, but it wasn't a new turtle per se, was it? It was the lone a surviving turtle. I won't, I won't right. give up, you know, what's you know, what to you know what the, what it is, but um, yeah, so I mean, just look out for, um, I mean, CinemaCon is one thing, but you know, Hall H has Hasbro will have a uh, 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 thing there, uh, they always do. They have a huge you presence. Rated R TiVo is going to be insane, though. Can you picture that? Like, it's going to be insanely graphic. It's going to be, uh, what would you call it? Just very different from what you're used to when it comes to TMNT properties. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I like would, that uh, though. Yeah, I mean it's it's like it's kind of dark. Yeah, going back to the original. I mean, even darker though. I mean, the original TMT black and white uh, kind of giant size format comic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was some dark stuff. It wasn't until you know they got they left Mirage and you know the, it became pizza eating cowabunga ninjas and turtles yeah. and co- in color. That's the one I know though. That's that's the version I'm used to. So like, just well, yeah, I mean, you know, darker, the last one yeah. was different. Yeah, in the '80s though, you know, it was kind of that, that was you know thing i mean even though we've never gotten even uh, close to like a pg-13 i mean the last one was pretty good but i mean that was still relatively you know kid friendly um the, yeah. but that was animated and dope animation too by the way uh but it was great i mean it's a great time for um like indie comics i was just thinking about this the other day how cool was the last three four years been of video game adaptations to live action because i was thinking that when i was yeah, watching fallout yeah right uh um, yeah there's a new borderlands movie coming out um I, well, obviously uh pedro the pascal the last yeah, of us the yeah. last of us yeah. yeah i mean there's been i just rewatched that actually i just rewatched that entire series with my daughter yeah it's pretty whose name is ellie resident, by the way resident evil uh oh yeah resident evil is a good they, one yeah yeah but uh, this has never been critically acclaimed have they i mean you know no as these mm. are like you know, they almost seem to do better in long still uh long tell you know what i mean long storytelling as opposed to uh a two-hour movie like fallout has been great i knew nothing about fallout when i went into it and i just watched it. Was another one what do you think about the witcher that, that's another game at that taste oh, that was yeah, oh that the was witcher was fantastic oh my god oh okay <laughs> oh, oh my god why is anything with henry so in good? it you know what that brings up a new thing <laughs> what is it? That's good. Oh, okay. Laura Sands, you, you should watch The Witcher. Why should they watch The Witcher? <laughs> when I'm expecting all you. That's something was... new. Okay. That's yeah. nice. I'm a little, I'm caught off guard. I did not know that was something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, had, I had JB work that up. I said, I'm going to come, boom, I'm surprised everybody with it. Things that Laura watched. Genuine watch. reaction. Like that. <laughs> that was a thing. No, it's things Laura um, say. Oh, it's things that Laura careful. say. Watch the watch. I 
I like the. I so like the she picture, said, <laughs> "Watch The Witcher." So there you go. Yeah, watch it. Well, I mean, Henry's amazing. He's a great actor. But uh, again, we played the video games, and my whole family's got hooked on The Witcher. I like the costume designs. It's really well done. Well, I really hope they do Warhammer, because um, Henry Cavill is mm -hmm. big into Warhammer. Uh, that would be dope if they do it right. You know, and that has to be long torn long form storytelling that cannot be a two-hour movie i mean because there's it's such a big world i used to play the games until it just got too hard for me to be honest with you your old age you're like man i just want to mash buttons you're like oh wow this got really hard but i used to i used to <laughs> i remember so far back as i was playing the um the uh rts version of of um war commander 40,000. you know real-time strategy because that's almost a lost genre and it's i miss real-time strategy oh. games yeah. yeah yeah i miss them so um fun fact did you know that henry walks whenever a woman walks into a room he stands up anytime what? yeah it was really? confirmed by some guy he was working on a film with um all throughout the superman movies all throughout witcher enters the room he stands and it's like holy hell could you be any hotter right now is that some good <laughs> stuff that things that she just <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, Where did you get that? Any hotter right now? That's that's the thing. <laughs> Things that lower. Uh, uh, <laughs> we got to go, guys. Uh, Miss Laura, what do you guys got going on tonight's show? All right. So right after this, the girls and I are covering controversial issues, um, just Ooh. different comics that have caused a buzz in the industry. And then, Ooh. like I said earlier, we have Doom launching tomorrow. And if you guys are not following our IG, we just showed four of our Comic Con exclusives. We got the. Batgirl 23 Middleton reprinted and was able to snag Jenny Frizen to do our cover for us. That's uh, Ooh, you guys are it. stunning. And then uh, Derek Chu did our other. So it's Chu, Frizen, and Middleton as like a set. It's awesome. And, and, and isn't she one of your favorite artist too she I is mean, my favorite that's artist deal. that's so a big deal for you guys it was a huge deal when she reached back and yeah. she said, yeah i want to do it i was like oh my god so amazing yeah, she's yeah. Congratulations. She's a nice that. lady she's nice um uh, marty you know actually we have to give away something in the live chat so uh yeah, yeah, yeah. you know well, let's think of things that laura does that we can give away since it's her stuff we're giving away you got a question i have to have a question or marty does no it's it's, it's your, your stuff. stuff i mean yeah, yeah it's your stuff, it's your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Make Marty do it. Oh. <laughs> so the winner is going to get this. Doom number one, Ken, our friend. You know, Ken Lashley is a friend of the channel. We've had him on a couple of times, actually. He wasn't yeah. promoting That's anything. One time he we he went on during COVID and he did a drawing and we gave it away to somebody. He sketched it. Li live chat. Uh, live oh, chat. Cool. Sketch. And, and we awesome. gave it away. Yeah. He's done a lot of really good it. work. So that was another you know, feather in the cap to get him to on a Marvel book. All right. So if you guys want to win, leave a comment after this video post and we will do a name. Drop no, I have, I have a good one for the live. I have oh, one. Oh shit. Okay. Go on. You guys go would on. have had to have been following me on Instagram or following Anthony. What is the bird city comics booth number at C2E2? Uh -oh. We have been posting it everywhere. Somebody in the chat should know this. Cause again, when does we C2E2 to start. C2E2 Laura? is next weekend, not this weekend, but the next following. Weekend. Okay. Yeah. So right. if you guys they are following, scrambling to their Insta Instagram. I know they're right all now. you're all cheating. It is not six six six, Jason. No. <laughs> no, that's Karis Comics was doing the Vampirella six six six. Not sixty nine sixty nine. You guys are getting blonde. Older. I swear, do none of you guys follow us? I feel like nobody in this chat follows us. That's a damn shame. We're trying to give away some shit here. Mm -hmm. Real I'll fake you... comics. Thank real fake comics. Uh, thank you for the. Um, actually, it's uh uh, autograph sign Prince Leia. Planet Arizona got it. He was All the first right, one. Planet Arizona, reach out to Laura. What, well booth. done, sir. See? Well done. Just because he doesn't follow you doesn't mean he can't look it up right now. <laughs> know, they all probably look it up really, really, really fast. It took a minute. Your Google your skills are your part, there. man. Uh, Marty, say your last words. Yeah, everybody. Hey, uh, thanks for joining. I, we had a great time. It's great to have uh, Laura back uh, with us. I mean, it's always right. fun to have her back and Good laughs, good times, good fun. Thank you, everybody, as always. Yeah. Uh, make sure you head on over to Nearing Nirvana. If you're on the show still, it'll be redirected over there. So you guys check out the girls from Nearing Nirvana. And then we'll see you Thursday for the Shaker Show at 6 p.m. Pacific. So next time, boys and girls, keep digging in the long boxes. Peace.
great hall of the Justice League. There are assembled the world's three greatest heroes, created from the cosmic legends of the universe. Their mission to fight injustice, to right that which is wrong, and to serve all mankind. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Update. Um, what's in the box? 